What's Thanks. going on, everybody? Welcome to the Queen of the Trap podcast. I'm your host, DJ K Dev. And today I have Milk Jeezy with me. Milk Jeezy, how are you today? I can't complain. I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing pretty good. That's good. good. I'm glad to hear it. I'm glad to hear it. So I'm, I'm so excited to have you on the show. Um, Milk Jeezy and I actually got introduced to each other through heavy hitters DJ, DJ New Era. And that's something that we're going to talk about um, a little bit during the show. But tell everybody who Milk Jeezy is and how did you establish your artist name? Well, Milk Jeezy is a solid individual from, uh, I say Jefferson County, because I move around, you know, I've been to a few spots and in the ham, you know what I'm saying? That's what we call it. We call it the ham, Birmingham, Alabama. But uh, I just say Jefferson County, man, because out of Fairfield and uh, I'm just a solid individual, man, that put out music based on, you know what I'm saying, my vibes, you know what I'm saying? Nobody else's waves, nobody else's vibes, you know what I'm saying? I try to create my own based off the music that got me started into music. We're going to talk about that, too, because I um, I see that you've been doing this for a couple of years now. Um, I want to talk a little bit about how you grew up in Alabama. And I also recently just found out that you and New Era went to high school together. So mm. my question is, can you tell me um, what your high school days were like? Because also... Also, explain what kind of school you went to, because um, I don't think anybody, I know what kind of school you went to, but I'm sure they don't know. Yeah, um, yeah, New Era, that's my dude, man. I, like I said, we went to high school together. He was a grade above me, but um, I did music, and the high school I went to, you know, everybody really much stayed in the same um we all lived in the area, you know what I'm saying? It was Fairfield on the outskirts of Birmingham. You know what I'm saying? It's like right across the street, pretty much. But uh, the school I went to, man, it was, you know, it was either gonna make you or break you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know, uh, we it all came- It was an all boys school, right? Nah, it wasn't an all boys school. Um, it was a prep- uh, Yeah, it was a prep school. school. Well. You know, after after time, after they did a little remodeling and changing up to the school, you know what I'm saying, they ended up naming it, you know what I'm saying, Fairfield, uh, Fairfield High Preparatory School, you know what I'm saying, but uh, I mean, it was still the hood, you know what I'm saying, it's Birmingham, it's a tool fire, you know what I'm saying, the 20 feet. Yeah, you know? I love Birmingham, I didn't want to leave when I came down there, hey, I love the scene down there. It's a vibe, you know what I'm saying. In Birmingham, you know, coming out of Birmingham, man, you can make it anywhere in these 50 states. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that it's different than any other place that you've been to, but Birmingham, a rough place. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people come from broken families. You know what I'm saying? A lot of hurt inside of families. So when you out there interacting with people in those streets and going to school with people, man, you got a lot of people that 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 come to school and come out into the world with a lot of pain and hurt that's coming from within the home. So, you know. You got cats that's gonna bully, you know what I'm saying? You got cats that's gonna pick on you. You got people that do shit to pass time. So uh I mean, I'm 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 very thankful from coming where I come from. I I I wouldn't say I'm proud of my place because I feel like we can be better and we can do better, but you know what I'm saying? It's the world and you have to travel the world to know these struggles and the things that people go through. Absolutely. In these worlds, you know what I'm saying? Because it's a different world everywhere. You know, from my block to your block, it's a different world. We might do the same shit, but it's done differently. Yep. You, you know notice that a lot too when it comes to the music. Like the music scenes are different too. Like you could play, like, you know, I noticed when I when I was down there, they play a lot more boozy, they play a lot more Gucci man. And yet, you know, we we play it in New York, but we don't play it like you guys play it down there. You know what I mean? You know, no, uh, Boosie and Gucci, Boosie and Gucci, man, they was like our uh, Donald Trumps of the hood. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, yeah, they was like the Farrakhan's of the hood. You know what I'm saying? They talked about what was really going on. We 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 could really relate yeah. to what and Gucci you know them said. And you know, Gucci, he's from Bessemer. You know what I'm saying? He's moved around Birmingham, and you know, Boosie, he's from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. But you know, they also they 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 always came through the city and showed love and. They always made songs and 
hit on things that struck, you know what I'm saying, struck our veins, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It was like a fiend shooting up. Once you get that good, you know, once you get that good fix, you know what I'm saying, you hire. They, oh, you know, absolutely. They kept, they kept us in the vibes with the times that we lived in. So, yeah, that's why when you come to Birmingham, you're going to always hear that Boosie. Oh, yeah. Boosie, you know what I'm saying? You're going to hear some T.I. You know what I'm saying? Anything other, you know what I'm saying? Trap music all day. Yeah, trap music, you know what I'm saying? Value, you know, you're going to hear some UGK, 8 Ball, MJG. You know what I'm saying? That shit we came up off for. That's you know what why I'm I love the South. That's Coming from stuff like that, man, you know, it, it, it wasn't too many examples. Like, when you go to other places, man, you got regular people that's living like rich people that's living like stars. We didn't have too many examples, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Our doctors, teachers, you know what I'm saying? And people that you might have supposed to look up to, you know what I'm saying? They was hustlers. Yep. So you know, those vibes that they gave us, man, you know, that's what kept us pushing every day to be able to want to be successful and want to be able to get out of that place and, and you know, do something with yourself, man. Be able to live a life that they say is enjoyable. Absolutely. That's absolutely true. Um another well going back to like the school thing what was the music scene like when you were in school like what were people listening to um what were you doing as far as music uh i say the music scene well back then compared I, to now well yeah back then yeah you, yeah we, we have to say that back then compared to now because um when i did music back well when i was doing music and listening to guys who did music like i say uh when I was in high school, a big thing was in the cafeteria, you know, when you take your lunch break, you got cats being with plastic forks, you know what I'm saying, coming up with trail ass beats, cats that was hot doing that shit. And it wasn't a lot of uh it wasn't a lot of trap rap, you know what I'm saying? So you really had to be, you had to be a a a, a, a lyrical genius or a guy that could vibe of music, you know what I'm saying? Because one too many cats talking about breaking down bricks, trap houses, all that shit, you know what I'm saying? You had, around that time, you know, Young Jeezy had just came out. You know, you had Yo Gotti, but you know, Gotti wasn't really out there with all that. Gotti wasn't really out there full-fledged with the trap, even with Boosie. Boosie and them, they talked about hustling, but you know, at that time, people were still lost. People was lost in the sauce back then, you know what yeah. I'm saying? They didn't know these guys Absolutely. posted up in trap, these guys was moving. And they really came from that lifestyle. So, like, uh, you you really had to have a a wave of your own, man. You really had to know how to rhyme. You really had to know how to rap. And when I was in high school, like I say, Young Jeezy had just came out. But before Jeezy, I was kind of stuck on the Texas swag. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And I was listening to cats like Swisher House, DSR, LBP. And they really rap with metaphors. You know what I'm saying? They had yeah. songs about when they was riding around in their cars watching on their TV screens and it was the hot it was the shit back then. Yep. It was the chop and screw, you know what I'm saying? Uh, so I miss those I, days. Uh, yeah, you know, I came up off a wave like that and uh cats who rapped in my school, you know, you really had to you had to have a a, a vocabulary. You really had to be versatile to be able to give people something they really wanted to hear. Absolutely. You know? It's not like nowadays where anybody could be an artist at this point. Man, as long as you got something to make people bob their head and you talking, well, I mean, nowadays that people realize, like, you know, coming out of a recession, you know, the only people had money in a recession was the dope boys. Mm -hmm. The dope boys were buying all the cars. The dope boys was cashing out. They were spending the checks. So it, be, it, it, it became a time where it changed the music and it changed the world because people were going through so much struggling shit. If you weren't talking about no money, people didn't really want to hear it. You had to be talking Absolutely. about something making people vibe and rock out, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, when Young Jeezy came in the game, man, That's it was another level, you know, seeing a cat that, that wasn't looking for a record deal. Mm -hmm. Cause when I started rapping, you know, we, we were wishing about a record deal, man. I, you know, I want to get a record deal, man. So I can get up out the hood, man. I want to get a record deal so I can show my people, you know what I'm saying? We can really live. And, you know, Jeezy came in the game and it was a, you know, a cat coming in the game with his own money, yeah. not looking for Deal. He really had the record deals. He had the record labels chasing him. You know, that's Absolutely. how I came my name. He did. Kind of, kind he of just got out of his um, what was it? Well, as of last year, he just got off of Def Jam and he went solo. Now he's yeah. got now he's got more free range to like do whatever he wants. But I actually it was it's funny because it was New Era who said something to me about Jeezy. He was like, the man preaches trap or die all day long, but when it comes to his son, 
he made him his son go to school. He made sure his son was like staying in school and not trapping. But that's kind of like any parent, you know, what, you know what I'm saying? Like, you're gonna have your job, but you're you're still gonna still gonna do what you got to do and tell your kids not to do these things. They're gonna make that decision. Were your parents like that growing up? Well, yeah, because actually, man, my mom, my mom doesn't smoke. My dad doesn't smoke or drink. My mom doesn't drink. Uh, my mom was a registered nurse, travel nurse, okay. you know what I'm saying, head of, head of her business. And uh, my, dad retired, uh, my dad was a retired school teacher. You know, my dad was actually an activist. He marched with Martin Luther King back in the days. You know, he even had proof to show me a lot of things. That's how I'm kind of educated on the world itself now today because of my dad. You know what I'm saying? I owe it all to my dad and my mom, you know what I'm saying, because they had patience with me and they taught me. You know what I'm saying? They didn't just settle for the bottom end of the barrel. You know what I'm saying? They they made a way. I say yeah. when I when I was a kid, man, we lived in one of the toughest projects in Birmingham, man. That's Southtown project. So I still, you know what I'm saying? I shout out Southtown because I was, you know, I was I was conceived out there, you know what I'm saying? But it was a place that you kind of didn't want to raise your kids. So my parents, you know what I'm saying, they did what they had to do to get me out of that environment. So I won't have to grow up in that. That's when we moved to Fairfield, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. uh my folks never condoned it, you know, just but being young, man, when you out in the when you out in the world and you know what I'm saying, all your friends, they live in the projects or they live in the lower areas of the city. You know, I play sports, so we go to the rec after school every day, we shoot ball, we fuck around in the projects and shit like that. So I kind of got snatched up by the streets, you know what I'm saying? My yeah. folks never taught me to be out in the world and move like that. You know, they wanted me to be a doctor, lawyer, or you know, whatever I could be. But being in the streets and I'm kicking it with my cats, man, and we doing this and we doing that, you know what I'm saying? I got I got attracted to the street life, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You no, know, I can be home at a certain time. My guys didn't, you know, we can go to their house, they mom in the back room, we can smoke blunts, we got the whole gang over, we kicking and we popping, we got freaks running all in and out, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> doing shit. Most cats can't do so, you know what I'm saying? I got I got kind of addicted to the streets, man. Absolutely. No. I think we all, it all happened. It happens to all of us too. Like I was the same way, you know, and then after high school, I was just like, I gotta, I gotta settle down a little bit and calm down. But I mean, we got to make a living somehow. And, you know, that's something too. I'm actually going to get into that in a few minutes. Um, I want to talk about street work and mixtapes. But my first question, my next question for you is, um, what producers from the West Side did you find dope? You say the West Side, you mean the West Side of the States? Uh, or what? No, the West, um, so your, your friend told me to ask you that question. So it was, I guess the West Side producers. Oh. West Side, uh, when I first started, I, I was actually on the independent label. Uh, one of my guys, I, I, I call him my big brother, man, my boy Luke. Because when I when I first started actually getting into a studio, learning how to record and actually going to a studio recording, because I, I when, when I first started, man, you wouldn't believe, uh, I had an old IBM computer. Oh, I did too. And I used to have a tape deck hooked up, but I, I was always smart with technology. So I found a way to kind of like hook my tape recorder up to my computer where I can play the music and I hook a mic up to it and I record over over tracks. And uh, I had a couple cats that was, you know, fucking with the Fruity Loops back then. And, you know, they do beats and, and, and I had Fruity Loops, so I make my own little beats and I started freestyling. That's, that's all I did. I freestyled over everything. Like I freestyled a whole song three minutes, four minutes, however long it was, and I freestyled the whole song. And uh, my 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 guy, Luke, he moved next door, man. And uh, His dad was a good hustler, man. He, he sold cologne. He sold music, you know, and coming up, in, you know, in the area we lived in, didn't too many people have stuff. So, you know, they uh they built my boy a basketball court in the backyard, man. I can, like, jump the fence. Oh. So uh, he was off into music, too, also. And I go over there, I always be freestyling, he hear me. Uh, he put me in the studio, man. And you know, all I would do is just freestyle, freestyle, freestyle. And he was like, man, you know how to write music? Like, you know, you know, four bars, eight bars, 12, 16. And I was kind of, you know, lost because all I did was freestyle. Like, yeah, you know, he showed me how to record. 
So that was like uh, my first independent label that I was on that brought me in. I was the youngest out of the label. We How had old were you when you first started making music? I mean, when I first, I first started rapping when I was about eight or nine years old. Okay. I, I lived just in the country and I lived with like my sister and three of my nieces and I wasn't from down there. So moving down there, I had nothing to do. So I would always freestyle in the shower. And then when I get out, I write, 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 write. And uh, I was about eight or nine when I started freestyling. When I first got into a studio and learned how to record, I had to be probably about 11 or 12. Okay. So you've been yeah. doing this for a lot of years. Yeah. Yeah. For a long time. You know, I've just been, you know, trying to elevate my craft and, you know, make it somewhere, you know, get my music heard across the world. Cause I always felt like I was unique. And, you know, since I was young, I had older people trying to get me, like take me here, introduce me to this person, introduce me to that person. Cause they knew I had a gift that I, that I, I couldn't see at the time, but I just knew I was good at it. Yeah. You know, that's how I got introduced to that. But like, Luke, since that was like my in-house, that was, that was, I was on an independent label. So that was my in-house producer, uh, Luke, uh, Chucky the Monster. Uh, Why does that name sound familiar? And I had a cat, I had a cat, uh, my boy DJ Dustin. I, I never forget him. Before I started, uh, well, actually around the same time when I started recording the loop, my boy had a, a, a machine where he can record me on. And, uh, his stepdad was a pastor, man, so we we always had, used to have to sneak over there when his stepdad went home and, and, and record the shit we record, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because he didn't realize, he was like, hey, you guys are talking about some shit. <laughs> and uh, I think my first mixtape, it was DJ Dustman, Luke, and Chucky. That was like the, the producers that I dealt with because I was so young. Yeah. Like, music world was still elevating around me. Like, a lot of people didn't do music. You know what I'm saying? I was like one of the few that did music in my city. Um, I remember a guy named Holotip. Holotip, you know, he made beats. Uh, but it, it, it wasn't too many cats, like, you know, it wasn't too many cats that were local. You know what I'm saying? You always talk about the, the people that already made it, speaker knockers, you know what I'm saying? Uh, just Blaze. But, you know, we didn't have money like that to go afford a Just Blaze or speaker knockers. Or, yeah. You know then when Gucci first came in, as they told me, you know, he, he and then at that time, producers weren't like producers didn't get that famous. Like you, you never know who made who made the beat. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it's not like now where the producers are just as famous as the artists. No, oh, yeah, you're right. But yeah, off the West Side, that was like one of my uh, Luke, Chucky, DJ Dustman. That was like my my main producers. You know what I'm saying? Guys that I got beats from. Unless I was going on like YouTube. No, back then we weren't even getting beats off YouTube. We had SoundClick. SoundClick. I don't think I've ever heard of that. SoundClick, man. That was where all the producers go load their beats up. Uh -huh. And, you know, uh, Johnny Giuliano, Torn the Beat Maker. You know, they started off SoundClick. You know, people were still in the beats rapping on top of them. <laughs> yep. You know, you still had the tags out through the song. Yeah. Gotta use all those samples. Yeah. Ellie's all the samples. Have you done any shows or anything? How, um, if so, uh, who have you opened up for? Where have you done shows? Well, I haven't. I I, I haven't done any shows. Uh, I left Alabama and I moved to Ohio. And when I moved to Ohio, it was a new place that I knew nothing about. Yeah. Uh, I just knew when I came here, I was gonna I, I was gonna let the people know who I was. Like I was gonna get my name out. Absolutely. You know? I was gonna let them know who Milk Jeezy was. I was gonna let them know that I was from Alabama. You know, I was gonna let them know that I was solid. So what I did, I did, I did a lot of, uh, I did a lot of open mics, man. Uh, shout, out, shout out, dude, shout out to my dude up here in Dayton, Ohio, man. Uh, first guy that ever gave me a chance with getting on the mic, letting people hear my sound. Uh, I, I, I can't forget him. Uh, Mo Better. You know, I. Uh, I met a girl when I first moved up here and, you know, she knew I did music and it was a spot that she used to go to and she knew guys would always do open mic. So she took me over there one time and she introduced me to dude. He gave me a chance. He never heard none of my music. Didn't know what I was going to be talking about. Didn't know what I sounded like. Yeah. But he gave me a chance. And uh, the first time I performed, man, I, I, I blew it out the water. Like, he was like, whoa. Like, dude, you're from the South. You got a Southern accent, bro. And your shit's hot. 
So like every time they had an open mic or every time they did something, he'd always invite me out, man. And be like, bro, perform this shit, perform this shit, bro. Shit hot, shit hot. So uh, I got my buzz. That was at Crickets. Okay. Over there, you know, people in Ohio started rocking with me. They're like, oh yeah, we fuck with this down south nigga, you know. You know, he's speaking some shit. It ain't it ain't just that mumble rap. It just no no shit that I'm putting together that just sound like some bullshit. I was really talking about shit. Like I really had, you know what I'm saying, methods and and I can paint you a picture. And that's that those are my favorite artists. Like if you could paint a picture, tell a story, not just, you know, like shake your butt and you know make money and stuff like that like we actually yeah. like want to know about you and like what what you've been through and how people can relate to that you know even if they yeah. can't you know some music is universal somebody's going to connect to it some way or another somebody's going to take something out of it it's that's why people got to push their music so much because you know you could touch other people's lives you could that yeah. song could like for instance like like i was saying we met through new era he had contacted me asking me if i wanted to make some money and you know do a ass shaking video and i was like yeah sure and then he sent me your track through my email and I heard it and I was like, oh yeah, I could totally do this. I was like, this track is a banger. And I love, I still, to this day, I still DJ it because it's just, those are the type of, like, you have to be universal. You have to be able to put out all different types of music, but that was the first track I heard by you. And I was like, yeah, this is a banger. This is something that people could play in the clubs. And that's the things that you should be sending to us DJs. That's something that artists definitely have to utilize is their DJs because that's what's going to get your music out. So I was happy to do it for you. I was happy to shake my butt and you post it on your page. <laughs> so thank you for that. Hey, I thank you for the opportunity, you know. Cause, Absolutely. Cause that I've I've tried to reach out to a few uh to a few women you know that dance you know ones that got Instagrams up um I've been successful with a few but I've also had a few that didn't got me yeah <laughs> but, they're like oh do this no but, but the game. hey during the corona I was having twerk parties left and right like I was helping DJs promote twerk parties I was I literally I was like DJing in my room and just twerking and people would send me money through my cash app like it was like the easiest money making scheme ever so yeah. I mean hey you gotta do what you gotta do sometimes and it's fun so why not and sure. you know I, you have like a compilation of them on your wall so I mean it shows off it shows off other people you're promoting other people as much as they're promoting you so right. everybody gets something out of it exactly you know that's that's the one thing I thought about you know I'm like hey well you know even if we both don't have like a million followers or 200,000 followers you know the fact that we're doing something that we're that we're still architecting our craft and you know eventually you know you do a video for me I post it on mine people going oh who is that yep you know what I'm saying? absolutely we all gotta help each other you, you know post it on yours people are gonna be like you know hey who is that you know what I'm saying? So, uh, you know, so, uh, so, you know, it's always a win-win, you know, especially when you're just trying to elevate your business, you know what I'm saying? I, I don't look at, I don't look at myself as too big, like, oh, well, well, I ain't gonna do this, and I ain't gonna do that. No, nah, man, we all got an opportunity to, you know what I'm saying, share our craft and expand our business. Absolutely. And you know, and it's, it's hard in this game because like a lot of people, but like I see it in New York a lot. A lot of people don't want to work with each other. That's why I do love the South because I see like the South actually, they want to work with each other. They want to, you know, they want to collab. They want to do this as opposed to like New York. People are all for themselves out here. You know, you try and help them and they take it a whole nother way or they're doing something totally different than what they were supposed to be doing so it's just it's hard you gotta you gotta find the balance in this business but you know if you could get people if you can get people to tune in and you know help promote 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 like that's why social media is great it allows people to and like it's free so we're promoting you know and we're putting out our stuff for the world to see and that's what draws people in so 
you got to put out good content in order to get those views, get those likes. And you're doing that. You are definitely doing that because I've seen your numbers and, you know, I've seen the people that have contributed to your music and promoting you and stuff like that. Um, what drives you to make music? Well, uh, when I grew up, man, my brother, he always listened to Wu-Tang, ODB. So I, I kind of got to music and my uncle, my uncle was big in the music. He wrote songs for Temptation. So like hearing my dad tell me stories about my uncle. And uh, when I moved down to the country with my sister, man, I, I moved down to a city called Prattville. My granddad owned land and owned a house out there by a park. And uh, just being down there, man, not knowing anybody, I go out shoot ball by myself, you know, nobody at the park, you know, and I just, you know, I just started rapping and I always listen to uh, cash money. You know, just, you know, just being bored, I had to have fun, you know, I had to find something to do that to, that can keep me, you know what I'm saying, busy. So like, I, I, I'd i always listen to music, man. I was, I listened to Ja Rule, uh, Cash Money, Pastor Troy, No Limit. And it was just the structure on how these guys made music. And, and, and at that time, music made me, it, 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 it kept me grounded. You know what I'm saying? At times when I felt like it was nothing around me, or well, a time when I was bored, music always kept my time rolling. So I got, uh, I got, I, I got wrapped in the music. I, I just started liking it, and I'm like, damn, you know, if they can do it, you know, I can, I can make my own songs. You know, I never wanted to be a copycat. So, you know, even though I listen to these guys and I heard the music, I'm like, okay, I can make me a song that can make people listen and make people tune in the way I was tuned in to the music that I listen to. Yeah. So that's what me to make music and then when I started making music and people were like oh man you man you're good and I was just freestyling like off the top of my head shit that I can think of like whatever comes to mind yeah that's so, awesome though and now look at you look how many years you've been doing it yeah you know I I, I may not have crossed the finish line yet but you know I'm still I see progress every time I do it you know so I never give up. I know it takes time. You know, anything that comes overnight can go overnight. So, you know, I take my time with it. Absolutely. With the change of music now, like you said, anybody can make something and just... Uh, anybody like can I be really, honest. Like, I want shit that's going to stick around. I want something that has a message. Like, I want something that even older people can listen to and be like, damn, this young cat talking some shit. Yeah. You know? yeah. Yeah. So, Put out universal music for everybody. That's yeah. and then distribute it to everybody you know. Get that stuff on every platform. Push it. Like I learned, I learned that early on when it came to like branding and building my um my podcast, my DJing, um, all of that stuff. Like I've also had this car jams with Kerry thing for years. That's what actually got me noticed by all the people like Uncle Murder, um, OJ the Juice Man. Like I would just be in my car like rapping their tracks and then they were like, oh shit, like she knows like everything. But it's because I was like constantly tagging people. I was constantly tagging them in it. I was constantly showing it off. I didn't care how annoying I was. I want, I knew that if I was putting it in their face, they were going to see it, whether they liked it or not. So like, yeah. that's, that's how I feel like artists should always be. Even if you're annoying, like, yo, get in these people's DMs, send them your music. They're eventually going to click it and peep it. Like, yeah. that's why you gotta you gotta utilize these social media outlets. You gotta utilize the people around you. Um, but another thing I want to talk about utilizing um, and DJs and stuff like that. So, I got sent two of your mixtapes from I think it was 2011. And they're called Birmingham Presents uh, New Year, New Money. And yeah. the other one was called Milk Jeezy Presents Need Water Volume 2. Can you tell me a little bit about those mixtapes? Because I did peep them. I love the covers on them too, by the way. I'm a big person who loves mixtape covers. So like, I like how the whole cover came out. I peeped some of the tracks. Tell me a little bit about making those. Uh, okay, first one I go off of is uh, 
I Need Water. I Need Water was one of my favorite mixtapes because not only just the name, but the energy I put in on those on that tape. Because I actually had a I Need Water Volume 1 and I got a Volume 2. Uh, I Need Water, I came about that because I felt like I was so hot. I was so hot, I need water. Like I like that. My hottest shit smoking around this motherfucker. Like, and like I said, at the time when well, nobody rapping, man. A lot of cats that that's from my city that was that's that's rapping now, that's around my age or probably a little bit under, you know, they were hearing me rap. You know, I was at school on the bleachers, cafeteria, when they played basketball games. My boy worked the PA system, so he played me during the, the timeouts and the halftime. That's awesome. I, I've uh I did freestyles at pep rallies and all type of shit. But uh like I said, I felt like I was the hottest thing around. So, you know, I need water was just showing the streets like, hey man, I'm hot. And I had a lot of bangers on that, man. Shit that I that I really uh shit that I really still go back and listen to now. You know, back in that time it was kind of like the Lil Wayne days where you know you rapped on other people's beat. Yeah. But you were as hot as they were, so you rapped on their beats and made your own songs. Absolutely. And uh, that's like one of my favorite projects, man. I need water. And uh, the New Year, New Money. Uh, when I first started rapping, man, I felt like I said, I felt like I was so hot. I, I, I didn't ask for features. I, I, didn't, I really didn't do features with other artists because I felt like I had so much to talk about on my own music that I can do a whole song by myself. I didn't, I didn't need anybody to do music with me. Yeah. So when I when I did the... New Year, New Money, that was when I formed a group. I formed a group with uh, two cats out of my city, man, that I felt like, you know, was solid people that I can really do music with. My boy MCs and my boy Lil Reggie. And uh, I came up with a group called BWH, Birmingham Heart. I felt like we was the hard and hitting motherfuckers out the city, and we was the youngest. I like and uh, if I ain't mistaken, Lil Reggie came up with the title, Lil Reggie. The Reggie came up with the title, Hennessy. It came up with the title, like, New Year, New Money, because it, it was a new year. We were doing new things. We were trying to, you know what I'm saying, come up, and we were seeing new money. We we did a lot of new things, and, and we all were doing new things. You know, me being in a group, I always said I'd never be in a group. Even when I was on my independent label, we had groups inside the label, but I was still my own artist. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It was Milk Jeezy. Or when you when you looked at the label, it was Milk Jeezy, it was Black Montana, it was Trouble Game, you know what I'm saying? But uh, that year I actually formed a group, Birmingham Hard Hitters. I got it tatted on my arm, I got it tatted on my stomach. My other cats, they got it tatted on them. You know what I'm saying? There's some of them take to the grave with me, but that was a very interesting mixtape also because when you're sitting in a room and you got other artists in there writing and we got pads out and we playing beats, it's exciting. And this person is coming up with this and that person is coming up with that. It's exciting as hell to put shit together. And uh, with that mixtape, I, I probably wrote, I probably wrote about 70% of the hooks for that mixtape because I, I had so much drive. I was just, ooh, I was off the leash. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I had so much stamina, man. I Every day they come over, I, I had new songs. I had new hooks I already wrote. I'm like, hey, I'm ready. let's do this. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And they had, in it, it was just so motivating to me that I that that, that I had my team ready to work with me. Yeah. You know, they, they were just as ready as I was. You know, I was always nervous about it because I'm like, man, I never do any music. Like, I, I don't really do tracks with other people like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, far as being in a group and having to share a song. So, like, that energy that I that that, that I pushed out and that they pushed back out to me, it was just immaculate, man. It was, it was, it was amazing. You know, it, it was, it was a craving like late night type shit. <laughs> late night awesome. craving. You know what I'm saying? You want it. And, um, uh, that was, those, those are some, ooh. I know. Some- <laughs> so I, I'm going to tell you, New Era told me to ask you about those. He's like, bring that hey. up. He's look, gonna be so surprised that you brought it up. <laughs> hey, and look, that was like, that was the era. Door open. That was the era of uh, like new era had just got off the ground with the DJ and shit, man. Like, you know, I remember when he first started with the DJ shit. You know, um, upgrading his studio equipment, you know, the elevating the sound, so all that. Like, we were we were 
we were the first artists to get a DJ new era fitted caps low. Oh. You no, know, he was dropping, he was dropping mixtapes, you know. Uh, I know I actually he like, we were- when he sent me your mixtapes, I just peeped his dat piff for the first time like i knew about his live mixtapes but i didn't know so i started going through every mixtape that he was putting out and i had seen your you know your mixtapes on there and i clicked on them and i started listening to them but um i just came across that they, like literally the other day mm-hmm. now um do you have any more projects in store coming up no, I know you have your single. You have that single out now, and I DJ that all the time. But do you have any mixtapes you're working on? Um, do you have any albums? Well, uh, I got an EP dropping. EP dropping May first. Okay. Me and uh, ninety three Michi. It's called "Fuck Your Producer." My beats are by Michi, because that's his tag. You know what I'm saying? All of my beats on there are made by him. I got that coming, and I got I got another surprise EP coming after that because I've been recording so much shit. I'm not gonna give it all to them at one oh, time. See, they gotta stay tuned. They gotta me stay. And, me and me and Luke, me and Luke got some shit dropping. You know what I'm saying? Two brothers at the south. That's what that's called. You know, it's a Luke track. Uh, I got I got a lot of surprises for me, sure. I'm excited. Well, I'm excited. I'm going to need all this music so that I can spin it and show it off to other people. And you're going to have to send it into the Hip Hop Buffet as well, because it's my other podcast for people that don't know. Um, But yeah, so I don't know if I answer. So how did the name Milk Jeezy come about? That, that's my last question because like we milk Jeezy, milk Jeezy. Does it have anything to do with Jeezy or I'm curious and I'm sure they are too. Okay, well, I'm, I'm gonna put them on this. Where I come from, uh my neighborhood, like like any other neighborhood, man, you got you got neighborhood gangs, you know, you got other gangs that come off, you know, other parts of the world that people, you know, when, when gangs started, they expanded everywhere. You know, people yeah. were a part of gangs and they moved to different areas and they started up a game uh my neighborhood man a lot of a lot of my a lot of my people that i surrounded around myself you know they were they were gangster disciple so you know the jeezy you know it was it started off as milk g you know what i'm saying like everybody around me you, you know spudgy rock g you know what i'm saying you know it, it, everybody had everybody that was gd had g behind their name you know yeah. you go through the hood, that's how people recognize you Oh, that's, you know, that's, you know, that's Swain G, you know what I'm saying? That's, you know, that's Messy G, you know what I'm saying? So I already had the the city name of Milk G, Lil Milk G or Milk G. And when I started doing my music, when Young Jeezy first came out, I was just so in tuned on how he came in the game, what he stood for and how solid his mark was. And I'm like, Jeezy. And I think I heard one mixtape, he was like, yeah, Young Jeezy with a J, get it right. And I was like, well, shit, I'm Milk Jeezy, because, you know, when I make my mark in the game and the shit I speak on, it's going to stick. Like, they're going to they gonna rock with my shit just how they rock with his shit. So I'm I'm Milk Jeezy, but Jeezy with a G. I like that. I definitely, because first of all, Jeezy is my number one, well, number two technically because two chains would be number one but second favorite artist ever to walk this earth so I definitely think that's dope and the like the concept behind it too I was always curious though I'm like why doesn't he start with the J but then I was thinking like okay like Jeezy has the J so maybe he didn't want to be like Jeezy (laughs) and I'm I can't I can't forget this when I was in middle school I got the name Milk I, uh, my middle school basketball coach, he was also my teacher, Coach Childress. You know, he, he was a cool cat, man. You know, you went to his class, man, he always made you laugh. At the same time, he also made you know, and, you know, he, he put it to you how important it was to get your education. But we would always crack jokes. And uh, he had a lazy eye, and, and I said a joke about his eye one time, and he told me I had a milk dud head. 
And like this, this, this <laughs> one guy, and this one guy in the class, man, I I, I never forget him, uh, Jeffrey Cobb. You know, he 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 thought it was so hilarious. He was like, ha ha ha, because we used to always crack jokes on him real bad, you know. So to hear somebody else crack a joke on me, that was really hilarious. You know, he, dude down there died in his seat. He was, ha, 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 you got a milk dud here. You got a milk dud here. And all my cats around me, they was like, man, you are dark skin, man. You is, you, you is dark skin, man. We're going to call you milk dud. Oh, so milk dud. My original nickname around, around the school and shit was milk dud. Then when I started rapping, and you know, like I say, my whole hood was gangster disciple. So it was like milk G. We're gonna shorten it up. Cause you know, people are like, man, I don't wanna keep saying milk dud. But people who really know me, know me, they'll tell you, oh, that's milk dud. You know what I'm saying? And over the years is doing music and really expressing that. And every time I did music, milk G, milk G. Then as I came along, like I said, when Jeezy popped out, I'm like, oh shit. I like what that dude stand for. I like the mark that he making. Man, I'm milk Jeezy. That's awesome. I like that. I like that whole concept and everything. Yeah. I like how you came up with the name. I think that's dope. I was very curious, but I'm so glad that we had this interview today. And I thank you so much for coming on my show. I'm looking forward to definitely playing more of your music and seeing more of what you're going to put out and have in store for us. And, you know, any way I can help, you're always welcome to reach out to me. I will definitely help you. Um, tell everybody before we go um, where they can find you, um, all your social media outlets, everything, your tapes. Yeah. Uh, you know, they can find me, for one, they can Google Milk Jeezy. You know, I'm one of the only artists that has a Milk Jeezy, if you, if you realize I'm one of the only artists that got, like, you're not going to go somewhere and, and see another Milk Jeezy. So you can Google Milk Jeezy. It'll take you to a lot of links. Uh, if you stream music, you can go to Apple Music, Milk Jeezy, M-I-L-K-G-E-E-Z-Y, uh, Title, Spotify, Pandora, pretty much uh, anything that you can stream music off of. That Piff, uh, SoundClick, SoundCloud, um, IG, Milk Jeezy 205. Pretty much I, I, I go Milk Jeezy with everything. Milk Jeezy 205. Milk Jeezy for life. Uh, that's, you know, that's the place that gave me life. You know what I'm saying? That's the first place that told me I was special. Yeah. So, you know, I roll with it no matter, you know, and I'm in Ohio now, you know, and I rock out with the Buckeyes on the heavy side, but they know what it is in Ohio. Yeah. They know you're Alabama, but I also rep Ohio too, because Ohio showed me a lot of love and support, you know. We got to get you to New York soon too. Hey, for sure, for sure. Once the world opens back up, we'll get some shows going on. That's starting to, it's starting to open up now. So hopefully by the summer we can get some gigs and everything like that, get some events going on because the city's always popping. There's dope clubs out there and especially getting your music out to those DJs. That's what you want to do, definitely. But I thank you for being on my show today. And I thank you. Thank Queen you. Yeah.